Hello, and welcome to Emmanuel Reformed Church's online worship service. My name is Johnny, and I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us today. One way you can stay connected with us is to download the Emmanuel Reformed Church app on the iTunes and Google Play stores. While on the app, we invite you to check in by pressing the care button and also leave a prayer request so we can pray for you. If you primarily worship with us online, we invite you to press the like button or hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. This helps us know that you enjoy the sermon and that you were worshiping with us today. Feel free to leave a comment, a question, or maybe share something that stood out to you from today's sermon. And we'll have leaders checking in throughout the week and interacting with you. As a church, we're called to worship God, and we do that in many different ways. And one of those ways is by the giving of our tithes and our offerings. You can do that by pressing the give icon on our app, going to our website, erc.la forward slash give, or by mailing it to the church office at this address. Just so our community knows, those in need of basic essentials may visit our food bank that's open every Friday from 8 to 10 a.m. at this address. And you can always call the church office at this number to let us know of a need. Let's pray as we begin our time together. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you. We come before you with uh, worshipful hearts. We uh, pray that you help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, and in by doing so, preparing our hearts to listen to your word. Lord, soften our hearts and our minds so that we don't come with preconceived ideas of what we want to hear, but that you simply talk to us, Lord, and that we can hear you through the sermon. Lord, be with us, be with our families, and help us to worship you fully. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Let's worship together. God, we welcome you into this space. And I want to invite you, wherever you're at, if you're able, stand up and clap with us. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome us. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you God is on our side. He has overcome us. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here.
We've got a number of issues um, in our world today uh, that I'm going to address as I walk my way into uh, the message that I had planned. Uh, the issues remain uh, race and COVID and uh, also what I would call the judgment to come. So when it comes to race, the question today is going to be, uh, what are we doing? What are we as Emmanuel do Church doing about race? The second question about COVID is, what are you doing? Uh, we're in a COVID season. What are you doing in Jesus' name? And then we'll move to the scripture we had planned on from Acts, and it's about the judgment to come. And it's what is God going to do? What will God do? So that's what's coming today. So I'd just like to start for a moment and address one of the key issues of our day, uh, race. Uh, Justin Martyr said this. He was a second century martyr, and he shared these words. We used to hate and destroy one another, and we refused to associate with people of another race or country. But now, because of Jesus Christ, we live together with such people, and we pray for our enemies. Justin Martyr. Christianity changed everything in a radical way. We're to live out the call of Christ. Emmanuel um, has resources for you already, but now we're going to narrow it down uh, and make it uh, plain to you. Uh, we've, we, in our steps of faith, we've made resources available for the congregation. It's called God, Emmanuel, and Race. Our action steps, what's Emmanuel doing about race? Our action steps are we're going to take to the police officers and sheriffs of our city and our area and also to our politicians with love, and we're going to share, here's what our own people, our own uh, black folks in our church, what they had to share. Here's also what our police officers had to share, and we're going to hand that to our police in our community. We're going to hand it to the politicians in our community with love and just say we'd like you to, to read what we have as a church. Number two, uh, we're inviting you to come step in, and we're going to walk with the young black men of our own church and of our community that are associated with us, uh, helping them have the brightest of futures. So if you'd like to be on a team that's going to be praying for, mentoring, cheerleading, encouraging our own young black men, and if we have enough people tying in, our young black women, uh, please join the team. And there's information on the screen for how you can contact me. Finally, we're going to love the police in our community. And we'll be writing cards to them, uh, letting them know we're praying for them. And those who'd like to give a gift to like a Starbucks a card, that kind of thing, uh, that'll be given. So we're going to be fighting for our black people. We'll be fighting for our police officers. We're going to be the church. I also, when this is done today, I'd like to, to challenge you to do something as we're taking action steps of race. I'll be listing three resources when the service ends. The first resource is a man named Dr. Brian Loritz. I'm not saying I agree with everything he's ever said. I don't know everything he's ever said. I listened to a 30-minute talk he gave, and I want to challenge you that you'd listen to his 30-minute talk and see if it might help us be the church we're to be at this time, uniting the races within the church. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, if you're open to it, a resource from the left and a resource from the right. In a sense, the left is throwing a challenge flag out and saying, you know, when you go to a football game and on one side a person can throw a challenge flag, like, hey, go back to the camera, see that again. I'm going to encourage you that you would listen to a person from the left and then from people from the right, and then you'd go back to the Bible and Jesus and say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? And how do we, as we hear these information from different sides, how do we walk forward as the people of God? When you live in a bubble, you've got a church that's a bubble, it's all your color, it's all your background, you're just talking to yourself. We're going to invite you to step in and hear from other people. And I think God's going to grow all of us. So that's race. When it comes to COVID-19, um, I'd just like to share this. The second question is, what are, what are you doing? Race, that's what we're doing. COVID, what are you doing? It's uh, obvious to everybody again that they've asked that the churches not be meeting uh, physically together again because of COVID-19. And uh, I just want you to know as our church, if ever we were told to do that and we believe that for political reasons we were told not to sing or to gather, we're going to gather, we're going to sing, and whatever the consequences are, they would be. We believe we're being asked to do this for health reasons, and so we're walking cooperatively with that. In the meantime, the ball's been put into your court. In Acts chapter 8, it says the church was persecuted, and then they were scattered. And as they were scattered, everywhere they went, they shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. What if this is actually your moment? That God is actually sovereignly at work, and we're not moaning and whining and crying. We're like, all right, God, what are you doing? And we step in and we take action steps because we're disciples who make disciples. We're not consumers. We're the disciples of Jesus Christ. 
So one sister, April, she turns and challenges everybody to watch the service. Then afterwards, she goes, hey, tell me what you got out of it. Another bro a sister, Nidra, she told me she's got a bunch of friends around the country that are watching, and so I encouraged her. She reached out graciously, and I said, why don't you, after it's done, Zoom with them, call them up, invite them to step in and, or to discuss. How did God speak to you through the sermon? We're in an unleashed church. Got a brother named Dave. He sends an email out every week to everybody of a scripture. He's now asking all of his guys that he's friends with, hey, watch the sermon. We'll discuss it afterward. Information's going to be on the screen for how you can step in, but could you be a person who says, to others, hey, get online, watch this message. Let's call each other up afterward and let's discuss it. What if God wants to advance the kingdom right now that he's at work? So it's a great opportunity, it's a great time. So on the issue of race, when we're done, you can look at again what we are doing. Number two, COVID, the real question is what are you doing? The ball's in your court and what a great moment from the Lord that God has given you. Now finally, today our sermon is on judgment what will God do one day? We're in the book of Acts. And so from Acts 24, if you are able at home, I'd love to have you stand up and hear the word of the Lord in a standing position, kind of out of respect. This is Acts chapter 24, beginning at verse 9. And we're looking at judgment, that a judgment day is coming. The Jews joined in the accusation, asserting that these things were true. When the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you've been a judge over this nation. So I gladly make my defense. You can easily verify that no more than 12 days ago I went to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me doing anything uh, at the temple or stirring up a crowd in the synagogue or anywhere else in the city. And they cannot prove to you the charges they're making against me now. However, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers and I am a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that agrees with the law and that is written in the prophets. And I have the same hope in God, as these men do, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. And then in verse 20, and then he goes on to say, And those here uh, should state the crime they found in me when, they, when I stood before the Sanhedrin. Unless it was this one thing, I shouted as I stood up in their presence. It's concerning the resurrection of the dead that I'm on trial before you today. And then finally, verse 24. Several days later, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and he listened to him. And as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus, uh, he listened as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul discoursed on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid. And he said, that's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. At that same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe so he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Pontius Festus, but because Felix wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. People of God, this is the word of God. So the message today, I want to talk about this. A resurrection day is coming. The resurrection day is coming. Here's verse 15 repeated for you. And I have the same hope in God as these men, that there'll be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Hey, the race issue is a big issue, really big. COVID is a big issue, really big. I'm now getting to a gigantic, gigantic, unbelievable issue. One day, all humanity, every color, every background, every group is going to rise from the dead. And they're going to be separated. And there's only two groups. There won't be all these different categories as main categories, the main categories will be the righteous and the wicked. What will you be known as on that day of days? Jesus turns and he talks about that separation as well. In Matthew 25, he turns and he says, the day is going to come where he will be seated on the throne. And they're going to separate people as sheep and goats. And the sheep will be on his right, and the goats will be on his left. Who are the sheep? I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was a prisoner, and you visited me. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. Lord, when did we see you hungry, naked, thirsty, in prison? When you saw one of the least of these, my brothers, in that spot, and you cared for them? That was me. 
a day of separation is coming. The way you be called righteous is you believe in Jesus Christ. You repent and you believe in Jesus Christ. That's what saves you. But if you're saved, you start acting like you're saved. If you're saved, we start doing the things of saved people. And we start caring for people clothed in Christ, then acting like Christ. Paul goes on to say, I strive to keep my conscience clear before God and man. I, I strive to keep my conscience clear. I'm, I'm going to one day be in the Lord's presence, and I'm going to be called righteous or wicked. Well, then how do I get called the righteous? Well, you repent and believe in Jesus, but you keep confessing your sins because you're in Christ. And Christ will prick your conscience and say, you shouldn't be sleeping with that person. You should be loving that person. You shouldn't be talking like that. You shouldn't treat me like I don't matter. He will prick your conscience. And if you're in Christ, you keep your conscience clear by saying, Jesus, I'm sorry for this, that, and that. And would you forgive me? And you seriously turn and want to change. It's the prayer of examine. You'll never be without sin, but you're called to confess your sin and turn from it. If anyone says they're without sin, they're a liar, the Bible says, and the truth is not in them. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We follow Jesus. Who teaches you? Who, who teaches you besides your cable channel, your political party? Can people in Christ teach you? And above all, can the word teach you? I've got a, a woman that's teaching me right now. I'm reading her book. Her name is Rachel Gilson. She's called, it's called Born Again This Way. Uh, Rachel uh, feels same-sex attraction. Uh, Rachel's now married to a man. They have a wonderful marriage. She still is aware of same-sex attraction, and she's blessed in the marriage that she has to a man. And she turned and said this, In Christ, I have the power and obligation to say no to temptation and to say yes to God. And here's one of her theme verses that she walks with. It's a great theme verse probably for you and I to walk with. It says this, For the will of God is your sanctification, that you would abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you would learn how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not in the passionate lust like Gentiles who don't know God. What if we are to be people who recognize there's going to be a resurrection from the dead, and I will live forever, and I will be called righteous, or I'll be called wicked. And the righteous are the ones who have repented and believed in Jesus. And now they start living like they belong to Jesus, and they get rid of sin. We're going to have the Lord's Supper next week. Please prepare your hearts. Uh, please prepare the elements. Please have bread and cup ready. But prepare your hearts by confessing your sins and repenting of your sins, that we would come to the table as clean people, clean because of what Jesus has done, and clean because the Holy Spirit's helping us to live like Jesus. Judgment Day is coming. Here's what Paul goes on to say. Several days later, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul, and he listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. See, Paul's explaining to a brother, a man, here's how you become a Christian. You'd have faith in Christ Jesus. And then he says this. As Paul discoursed further on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, that's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. So Paul is on, he's in jail all the time. Then he gets brought before governors and kings and Sanhedrins, and he has to testify. Well, he tells them they need to have faith in Jesus. It's by repenting and believing in Jesus who lives sinlessly, died for our sins, risen from the dead. He's coming again. By believing in him, you get eternal life. After he shares that message, he goes further going, you are in Jesus, or you want to be in Jesus? He has these three words. You need to walk in righteousness. You need to be self-controlled. There's a judgment coming. And as he says this, Felix gets nervous, right? He's nervous, and, and he's like, uh, uh, that's enough for now. Uh, when you, uh, later, I'll hear from you. Righteousness. Folks, we're called to be righteous. Righteous by being forgiven by God, but now right with God, and loving our neighbor and loving our enemy. That's righteousness. Self-control. Uh, we learn to control our mouth. And on social media, we're not fools. 
and with our bodies, we honor the Lord. I'm going to just say this. We Christians, we get married or we live single. We can learn to control our body. If you're an American, you can do whatever you want. Life, liberty, the pursuit of it, you, you, it's your life. You're free, your liberty. Pursue your happiness. That's American. Christianity is that we need to learn to control our bodies, that we're to practice self-control. So when we come to the table next week, we come as forgiven people, people that we're talking the right now way with our mouth. We're saying the right things on social media. We're walking morally because we're loved of the Lord. Judgment Day is coming. There's a sister in our church that's very aware of Judgment Day coming, and she's a role model to me. And she's in Celebrate Recovery, and this is what she had to say in Celebrate Recovery. This scripture came in a text. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And the sister said this. When I started attending Celebrate Recovery, I had a lot of stuff in my life that I didn't want people to ever know about me. I've learned a lot about myself and how I would make excuses and try to cover up my sins. I truly understand how important it is now to confess my sins to the Lord. With repentance, he takes pain and shame away. As I follow the Lord and daily turn away from sin, I've learned how to live a free life, and in that freedom is peace and joy. I choose to turn from wickedness, where there's always secrets and lies. With God, there's no secret and no lies. She's learning to walk in righteousness. She's aware there's a judgment to come. And she's not living in fear because she's living in confession. Folks, a day of judgment's going to come. And it's going to be a day that we will be blown away by the grace of God. But we're going to be blown away by the judgment of God. There will be people eternally judged. Listen to this from Romans chapter 2. But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when God's righteous judgments will be revealed. God will give each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. A day is coming. Race is a huge issue. We've got to deal with it. COVID's a huge issue. We've got to walk within this. A day of judgment is coming. God is gracious and he is slow to anger and abounding in love. But a day will come where those who aren't forgiven in Christ will receive what they deserve. We can be forgiven. We don't want that day, the day of wrath. Today's the day of salvation. As he's speaking about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid. Well, he should be. You should be afraid. That's why it's one of the reasons you turn to Jesus. I need someone to forgive me from the holy God for my sins against him and others. He was afraid. Uh, that's enough for now. You may leave, Paul. I'll call you when it's convenient. I wonder when it ever became convenient or if it never did. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today. Hebrews repeats it over and over. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, and when he went to Zacchaeus' house, he said, today, I must come to your house today. And Zacchaeus gives his life to the Lord, and Jesus says, um, today, salvation has come to this house, today. The thief on the cross turns to Jesus. He doesn't deserve, he deserves wrath. He's getting wrath. He's dying on the cross next to Jesus. But he asks for life in Jesus. Jesus says, today, you'll be with me in paradise. To all listening, Today is the day to repent of your sins, to believe in Jesus Christ, and say, I'm here to follow you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you have life in him now and eternal. I wonder if Felix is forever in hell. I'll call for you when it's convenient. Today's the day of salvation. So let me walk backwards and then back into this message. When it comes to race, it's a time for our church to keep stepping forward with the Lord. We're going to give you three action steps when this service ends, and the three action steps will be, would you watch Dr. Brian Loritz, a 30-minute message? Again, I don't know everything Dr. Brian Loritz has ever said all over the place, but in this 30-minute message, he kind of nails how we're trying to walk as a church, unified in the area of race. 
and there's going to be two other th resources given to you, one from the left and one from the right. We're asking, would you read, listen, and then would you come back to the Bible and the cross and say, how can we be the one church together? And when it comes to COVID, right now, could you respond? The, the race question, this is what we're doing. The COVID question, I wonder if you could just stop for a moment and think, what am I doing? What, what am I doing in this season? And if you're interested in helping to lead a group, or if you're interested in helping us with the police officers or with our young black men, there's a thing that'll be put up my um, information that you can join in with us as we take these steps. I close now just with the judgment. One day, the main categories in heaven, there will be all these different backgrounds. It's going to be glorious. But all the backgrounds will be united in being called righteous. And there will be people who are not with the Lord weeping and gnashing of teeth eternally. And they'll be all backgrounds. But they won't be known mainly for their backgrounds. They'll be known as the wicked. And the righteous won't be known mainly as their backgrounds, though their backgrounds are from the Lord. They'll be known as the righteous. Right now would be a good time to be given to the Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so much and we praise you that you sinlessly lived on this earth following the Father's command and coming to bring us into his kingdom. We praise you for your sinless death on the cross for us. And we don't minimize that. We say, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we repent of our sins. We repent of living like we are God. We repent of how we harm others or don't care about them. We repent. And we believe in you, Jesus Christ. We trust in you for eternal life because of what you've done. We believe in your sacrifice and your eternal life. And in our salvation in you, Lord, we pray we'd now follow you. And people would notice us loving all the backgrounds around us. They would notice that we're not moaning in the COVID season, but we are ministering in the COVID season. And we pray, Lord, we would be known as the righteous because we're clothed in Christ and we're learning to act like Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So receive this benediction, the righteous in the Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the powerful support of fellowship be with you now and forever. Amen. I'd like to share uh, three steps Emmanuel has taken and three things we'd like to ask of you concerning race. The three steps Emmanuel is taking is we put together a thing called Emmanuel, God, and Race, quite a big package. We'll be bringing sections of that to our police department and to our uh, political leaders with respect so they can hear the words of our own black Christians and their experience, but also our police officers, and they will we'll be passing that on. Um, the second thing uh, that we're doing is we're actually gonna be walking alongside of young black uh, students and young men. And if you're interested in helping us do that, there's a team being formed. You'll see information right now that you can get a hold of me. You can join our team. That's gonna fight for our young black people. The third thing is we're gonna be uh, writing notes to our police officers in our own local community and giving them Starbucks cards or gift cards. And if you'd like to help us love our police officers, there's information, you can join that team. So those are immediate things that we're doing to respond to our people we love that are black in our midst and in our community and the police officers that are in our community. Now I'd like just to move to something that I'd like to have you consider doing. Would you consider watching a video right now of Dr. Brian Loritz? I think he's done one of the better jobs of helping us understand each other and figure out how we could walk together forward together. So I really hope you'll watch it. And we're not, and all the resources I'm giving, we're not turning and saying we endorse everything they've ever said on every category. We're just saying, would you watch this? So Dr. Brian Loritz, I hope you watch him 
and let that stand on its own as a resource that might guide us in how we think about things in the future. Finally, I'm going to give you a resource from the left and right. And the reason I'm holding this, if you watch a football game, people can throw a, the coach can throw a flag out, a challenge flag. Well, I'd like to challenge you, because we don't live in a bubble in Emmanuel Church. And a challenge flag comes from the left, and it comes from a person who spoke to the ACLU, and he spoke about American history. A challenge flag from the left. I challenge you to watch that, see what you learn. Then a challenge flag comes from the right, and it's a challenge flag that's challenging kind of the woke culture. And we'd like to say nobody's infallible. No one has a right to say, you can't challenge us. And so we'd move to the first video, could we be united? And then could we learn from the left, could we learn from the right, and hold our scriptures and say we're going to be united around the cross and in humility and guided by the word of God. I hope you'll take advantage of these resources. God bless you.